Okay, so it's been a couple of months since I had anything to say about uh, the FreeNAS box that I set up some time ago, and um, I thought that all of you might like to see an update. Oh look, the furnace just came on. Guess I better make this quick then. Suffice it to say, the FreeNAS box has been a phenomenal success. It sits down here, it does its job, had very little trouble with it other than some of my own stupidity that caused problems some misconfigurations, a mistyped command, nothing that was terribly difficult to recover from. This thing just sits here and it runs. It has an internal Samsung EcoGreen 500 gigabyte serial ATA hard drive and that handles backups from the PCs. Backups from the PCs, running Windows of course, happen a couple of nights per week. They're all on a different night per week. Some of them are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Some of them are Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Something along those lines. Anyway, in addition to that, we're also backing up the Macintoshes in the house, such as the uh, MacBook that we edit all our videos on, the Mac Mini, my mother's iMac, my dad's MacBook Pro. We've got, a, we've got about four Macintoshes total backing up to this thing over Time Machine emulation, and that's what this is for. This is a disk hooked up via external serial ATA. It is a conventional Samsung 750 gigabyte hard drive and it is dedicated entirely to the purpose of making of storing time machine time capsule Macintosh backups. A task that this thing performs just about perfectly. This thing over the time that we've been making movies it writes, you know, after we're done editing a video, it may be writing out 10 gigabytes worth of files and it doesn't skip a beat. The only thing right now that I'm kind of left wanting for is over on our PC side. I just didn't realize how quickly that 500 gigabyte disk was going to fill up, and it's within about 30 gigabytes of being full right now. The nice thing about this, though, you know, all backups are great as long as they work. And this has been working pretty well. But the thing that this facilitates is making off-site backups. And what I can do is I can run, since this is basically a Unix, a BSD Unix-based system, underneath the scenes here, I can log into the system console, that's what the keyboard and the monitor are for, I can log into the system console, or I can even do it over the web-based administration interface, and I can use the rsync tool to exactly duplicate the contents of the disk in here, the time capsule disk, and I can send them all to this Seagate 1.5 terabyte external USB hard drive. Then I can take this hard drive and I can put it in a safe deposit box at a bank, completely off-site, away from this house. And I can know that even if something happens here, my computer data is very likely to be safe. Now the nice thing about using rsync to do this, you can use a number of other Unix utilities such as DD, or one of those writing tools that works on a block level basis. The nice thing about using rsync to do it is that rsync only has to do a differential copy or an incremental copy I guess you could say. I'm not sure quite what the correct term with regard to rsync is. But suffice it to say that once you've made the big long copy run to one of these drives, rsync only has to copy what's changed for subsequent backup runs. It's my intention to have enough of these drives up here to be able to get through at least a year, have one for every month of the year, storing PC and Macintosh backups both, and then cycle them around. So you can see how that works. So far I've made two. I've made one for January, and I made one for December. This one will be for February's backup, so it's going to happen in about a week. And it really, it really has worked very well. If you have, if you feel like spending some time, spending some money to build yourself, a nice little low power system that you can run FreeNAS on, I would highly recommend it because for me it has worked very, very well. And it has some other nice features as well that you can't duplicate. I mean, I have this little Linksys network storage link up here and it's got some disks attached to it. But it's a very simplistic device. It's pretty much a one trick pony. It provides Windows file shares and that's pretty well it. Doesn't have the ability to run rsync jobs. Doesn't really have a good way to dump the contents of one disk to another. It just, it's not a very fancy device and some of the third party firmwares that you can get for it are really more work than I want to take on because what I've got here is a setup that works pretty well and I'm inclined to leave that alone 
and use this for everything else going forward. But one of the things that you can do with it is you can have it hooked up to a UPS. And so what I've got going on here, I have the FreeNAS box, and I need to get some way of plugging in these other external power supplies to these other external disks, because it might not like it if they disappear. But I've got all that stuff plugged into this UPS, and there's a UPS data, there's a USB data cable on the back here that plugs into the USB card in this computer, and that signals the computer to shut down when the battery is getting low. So if there's a power outage, I don't have to worry about it. This thing will take care of itself. And this old Vectra, although it has a soft on-off switch, it is smart enough that after a power failure, it'll come back on with my, without my having to come down here and intervene. So that's the story on FreeNAS so far. I thought you all, those of you who have an interest in this particular project, I thought you all might want to hear about how it's been going for me, and it has been going very well.